Augmented reality appears to be rather on vogue at the moment. Apps like Snap and Pokemon Go have had the wow factor and put a smile on plenty of faces. But AR isn't new. In fact, it's far from it. You can thank L. Frank Baum, the writer of The Wizard of Oz, who came up with the concept of AR glasses back in 1901. Glasses which would position a letter on the forehead of people you meet to tell you more about their character. Sounds a bit creepy. The term augmented reality was coined by Boeing in 1990, but it was the invention of the smartphone that brought it to the masses, and this year some predict it will become massive. 2018 is really going to be a breakout year for augmented reality. There are software creation platforms that are empowering people to build AR experiences. There's the increased prevalence of mobile devices, uh, and it's becoming a much more um, strategic implementation for brands. Uh, it's becoming more of a CMO conversation and an always-on strategy uh, with the creation of, of AR experiences across multiple touch points. Face filters and social sharing, mini games will continue to exist and continue to unlock value for brands. Uh, but increasingly we will see uh, it used at different stages of the consumer journey. So that could be in the active consideration stage where um, consumers are choosing one product against another. Uh, AR kit has been a big step change in that where through visual odometry we can uh, now position products in the real world as if they're actually there. Uh, so people can see something in their home, they can see something in their driveway, uh, and all of a sudden it, it, it's touching these different parts of the consumer journey, uh, including actually purchases themselves and having a direct ROI and a, a direct effect on the, um, on the bottom line. What's set to make a big difference is a shift in how AR will be utilised. From a marketer's perspective, I think AR historically has mostly been used around brand engagement uh, applications, what we might call surprise and, surprise and delight. Um, our sense is that while that is still important um, and will be a, a value part of the marketing mix, AR has potential to be more flexibly used in other areas. Brands are going to look to um, be more assistive to try and help people solve problems, um, provide some sort of service or utility. Uh, and AR we see is, is, is absolutely being a, a very strong technology for delivering, delivering what we would call more everyday utility, so tools that people might come back to um, time and time again. Apple and Google have already got developer kits in place to make it work for brands, and consumers have warmed up to AR through what's already available. IKEA allows you to see products in your own home, and Amazon is already expanding a similar idea for some of its products. AR also has the ability to pump new life into long-standing products like Pez. It's all about uh, what it causes the consumer to do. Um, uh, so with the Pez example, this is all about driving refills of their uh, candy refill packs, and so the, the sweeties that go inside the Pez, which is a much higher margin product for them. Um, but actually, um, you know, uh, so, well, it's a key priority to, to, to drive sales of that. So what the AR is doing in this instance is it is adding digital value to that. Pez brand is all about play and fun. Uh, so adding AR to their refill packs, uh, they can add value to them. It's, uh, there's the discoverability element, so you go into the, the grocery store or the sweet shop and uh, open your pack and scan your code and, and see which level you've unlocked. Uh, so it's engagement, it's loyalty, it's frequency, um, and it's adding value to a physical product. Post-purchase play is just one point at which AR could be increasingly useful in the marketing funnel. If we think about the whole space of connected packaging, so taking product packaging uh, and thinking about it as a brand's largest owned media channel, uh, and with an always-on strategy for connected packaging, it can be about nutritional information, where's this from, what can I use this with, uh, and that should be a, 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 an always-on full 12-month calendar of content. Uh, but then we want to see, uh, and we are seeing, spikes of uh, maybe it's a World Cup um, uh, association and there's a, a football game that comes from it, or there's something around Christmas uh, and starting to build out that calendar of content with those two different layers. Our sense is there's value to brands in many different areas of, of the consumer journey. Um, I think historically brands have mostly used it in what you might call the initial consideration stage, which is really where the fun, playful, engagement type mechanics have, have, have come into play. Um, our sense is there is going to be growth in, in, in later stages of the journey, um, the, the active evaluation stage where people can weigh up choices and visualise what, what products look like. We think there's lots of application there for, for retailers. Um, and we think at uh, the post-purchase area where people can get more out of a product by scanning it uh, and having some kind of experience, maybe instructions about how to use it properly, um, maybe some sort of 
uh, recipe advice, how to, how to get the most out of, of a food product, let's say. Um, but I think interestingly, we're going to see more innovation at the actual point of purchase. That hasn't really happened to date, um, but there's been literally in the last few weeks a, a series of announcements around um, what's called shoppable AR, particularly from Snap. Um, but the idea that you might have a, an experience where you're evaluating options and then be able to go straight through to, to purchase. Um, we see a lot of uh, potential there uh, for brands for AR. One key feature of AR is that it's highly measurable on a number of levels. We can see exactly how many people have engaged with what part of the content they've engaged, what they went on to do, in which country. Uh, so it's completely accountable uh, and all about meeting commercial and marketing objectives. Uh, and any campaign planning should start with why are we doing this? We absolutely advise against it being an innovation tick box or a mobile strategy tick box. Uh, so start with the problem you're trying to solve, see if AR is the solution. It's not, it's not a silver bullet or a panacea or the answer to everything, but there are sp specific use cases where we've seen it can add real value. But is AR just a marketing gimmick or can it have a more profound effect on us? NeuroInsight measured brain activity within a group of volunteers, comparing AR and non-AR engagement across six tasks. It included sites like IKEA and BBC's recent Civilizations programme. The brighter colours on the right show higher levels of brain activity. So what we found was that looking at brain response, AR elicited really high levels of activity in lots of different areas of the brain. Essentially people were finding it exciting, interesting, surprising. Um, we looked specifically at a number of metrics, so we found that memory response was about 70% higher when people were doing the AR tests. Um, the emotional intensity was a lot higher and visual attention, so the extent to which their eyes were engaged by what they were doing was almost double. But is there a strong correlation between AR use and brand engagement for marketers? One of the things we look at is a measure called engagement, which is a sense of personal relevance. So that's the extent to which people are identifying with the thing that they're seeing and hearing. And along with the other metrics that we saw, this personal re relevance measure was much stronger for AR. So it's suggesting that, again, it's not just a transient experience, it's not just something that's conveying information, but it's actually making pe people feel closer to the product that they're dealing with and relating to it at a more individual level. Visual attention and emotional response shows that people are really engaging what they're doing. But they're not necessarily an indication it's going to drive future behaviour. The really significant statistic is what's happening in terms of memory. Uh, we put stuff into memory if our brain subconsciously identify a use for the information that we're being served up. And in this case, we saw a really strong memory response as well, which indicates that what people are seeing or doing is likely to prompt future action. So for marketers, the fact that something's going to memory is showing that people are taking in the information in a more effective way, in a way that's more likely to drive behaviour. So this isn't just a transient, interesting experience. It's something that's actually delivering stuff that the brain finds more useful, files away in a way that can actually influence what we do going forward. So what advice do our three experts have for brands thinking about using AR? I think one of the areas that they really should be focusing on uh, is around how they can maximise their own assets. Because AR ultimately is about adding layers to something physical. Uh, and so many brands will have you know, physical real estate, if they're retailers, if they've got car showrooms, they'll have potentially the, their physical product itself, they'll have packaging, they may have their own app already installed. All of these are touch points that can be added uh, to which extra connectivity and layers of content can be added um, to make them a richer and more immersive experience than they are currently. I think it's got a role at various points in the, the marketing funnel. Um, it can influence people at the point where they're just creating new perceptions about something so you can add new associations with a brand or product by delivering a more vital, more exciting experience. But it can also help to drive more loyalty with the product. If people are using a product and getting a great experience from it, then that's creating memory structures in the brain, that's creating associations that will make them more loyal, more likely to adhere to that particular brand. Our advice for brands is to focus on the three C's for success. Context, making sure you're talking to the right people at the right time. Call to action, telling them exactly what to do and exactly what they're going to get. And content, making sure it's adding value either as entertainment or utility and it's not content that could have been, uh, got uh, quicker or better elsewhere. And then also commitment, so committing to this as a long-term strategy and not tacking it onto the sides of the campaign. Uh, if I was to give one piece of advice to marketers out there, it's make sure you start with the objectives and work back from there. In a nutshell, AR could be incredibly useful for marketers. The level of response that we saw relative to the equivalent task without AR was 
unprecedented in terms of what I've seen before in brain response. That the difference between the two things was enormous. And if marketers can leverage that in the right way, it could be a massive opportunity for them. Hello, I'm James Wright. Thanks for watching Marketing Media Money. To check out more online videos, just click on the boxes and don't forget to subscribe to the CNBC Life channel at the bottom of the screen.